So in this Hello World program, I will show you how to create a basic multi-threaded program. So you can see I'm in the file hello world.c, right? And in order to write a multi-threaded program in C, you need to hash include this header file which is pthread.h, right? So it is one header file which you need to hash include whenever you need to work with post 6 threads. So let us begin writing our multi-threaded program. If, if you simply create an executable of this hello world program at this point of time, and if you simply run the program, it will create one thread which is called a main thread, and that main thread will execute the function main function. As I said in the previous lecture video, that any application has at least one thread, and that is called a main thread. Right? Now let us develop this multi-threaded program, and let us see that how main thread can create more threads. So let us start with our development from the main function of course. So what I will going to do is that from the main function I will going to create a new thread. So in order to create a new thread I will going to write a user defined function called thread one create. Shortly I will show you the implementation of this function and since it is a main thread which will be the parent thread of the new thread which it will going to create now remember one point that if main thread terminates then all the child thread which main thread has created also get terminated right so we would want the main thread to not to terminate right if your main thread terminates your entire application is terminated right so whatever child threads your application has created all those child threads will also be get terminated right so we would not want our main thread to terminate and therefore i have inserted this pause function right in order to make use of this pause function you must hash include the header file hash include unistd.h so as you run this program your main function will get halt at this pause line right it will not get terminated now let us discuss the implementation of thread one create function. In this function, we will going to create a child thread. So guys, now let us start the implementation of our thread one create function. So to start with, we already know that in this function, I need to create a new thread, right? So every thread is identified by a data structure called pthread underscore t right so it's an inbuilt data structure which is defined in the header file pthread.h as an end programmer or developer you don't have to worry about the internal definition of this data structure meaning that you don't have to worry about what are the members of this data structures right this data structure is opaque to a programmer or developer when I say opaque, it simply means that as a developer, you never need to know what are the internal members of this data structure, right? So it is an opaque data structure which has been exposed to the users or developer to work with threads. So this pthread underscore t is also popularly called as thread handle, right? So since we need to create a new thread, we need a thread handle using which we identify that particular thread, right? In other words, you can think of it as a variable which you can use in your program whenever you need to perform operation on the new thread which is represented by this thread handle, right? Now having created this thread handle, let us take some input which would serve as an input to the thread that we will going to create, right? So you are going to create a new child thread and a thread are supposed to do some work. And in order to do some work, you need some input, right? Just like you have functions which do some work and functions need input. In the similar way, the threads also need input. So, <clears throat> so since we are writing a hello world program, let us take a very simple input which is nothing but a char string right and this string simply says that I am thread number one in this program we will just going to create one child thread now that we have taken an input data which needs to be provided to the child thread that we will going to create the new thread is created using API pthread underscore create now this is an inbuilt API which is provided by our POSIX thread library right so new thread is created using pthread underscore create api right 
Now let us discuss the argument that we pass to this API. The first argument to this API is nothing but the thread handle, right? So you need to pass the address of the thread handle. The second argument we're going to discuss later. For now, you can simply pass it as null. The third argument is a pointer to the function. We will going to discuss this shortly. And the fourth argument is nothing but a data or input data, which we need to supply as an input to our new thread. So in the fourth argument, you need to pass the address of the memory. And this memory will be consumed by the new thread as an input, right? So always remember that the memory which is provided as an input to the new thread must be the memory on the heap or it must be the static memory. It should not be the memory which represents a local variable in the function which is creating a thread, right? So this chunk of memory should be either static variable or it should be a memory on the heap. When I say a memory on the heap, it simply means that it is dynamically allocated memory. It is very wrong if you pass the input to the thread, the address of a local variable. In other words, the address of a memory which is on the stack. So this particular line that is line number 47 is a fork point, right? The thread one create function is called and it is being executed in the context of a main thread right it is the main thread which is executing but at line number 47 the main thread is now giving birth to a child thread so line number 47 is your fork point now you can read these useful comments that pthread underscore create api returns zero on success otherwise it returns a negative value which represents an error right so you can always print the value which is returned by this pthread underscore create function in order to know that what is the error code return, right? From that error code, you can find out that if your creation of the thread fails, then what is the reason behind it? And with this, we have finished with the implementation of thread one create function, right? So now you can understand it very well that why the last argument of the pthread underscore create function has to be a memory which is either on the heap or static memory. The reason is that that at fork point that is line number 47 a new thread will going to be launched right and while the new thread start executing the function thread one underscore create would going to be returned that is it will complete its execution. And we already know that whenever the function returns, all the local variables inside that functions are destroyed, right? So it is for this reason that you cannot pass the address of a local variable of the function which contains a fork point. So in this case, if this input was simply a char star thread input, then this, then passing of this argument would have been very wrong, right? By the time your new thread starts execution, by the time the new thread starts its execution, the function thread one underscore create had returned and this memory, which was the local variable would have been destroyed. So it means that whatever argument or input you had provided to your new thread is actually an invalid memory. So it is for this reason that this input either should be static memory or it should be a memory on the heap. Now let us discuss what this function is that is thread function callback. 